maraming salamat sa introduction. Uh, so, dahil ako'y masunurin, uh, uh, the topic for our, our theme is about participation of the academy. So, <laughs> more or less, I'll be uh, sharing about engaging the higher education institutions in particularly in multi-hazard early warning system in coastal communities based on the cabaret experience. So just a segue, um, social sciences or social scientists can contribute in the whole gamut of disaster risk reduction and management uh, from preparedness, from response, uh, post-disaster rehabilitation and development. But today, uh, because of the interest of time, I will be focusing on multi-hazard early warning system, which is part of the preparedness phase and uh, focusing on the experience of the project. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I, I don't have to elaborate on this, but uh, I think it was mentioned by uh, Congressman uh, and the other speakers that the Philippines is located uh, in the Pacific Belt and uh, Ring Fire, Ring of Fire, and th th that's why we're exposed to specifically on coastal hazards. Um, the extensive coastlines uh, spanning to 36, more than 36,000 kilometers, are frequently visited by typhoons, uh, and 62% uh, of our territory and 73% of the population of the Philippines are experiencing more than one hazard. Um, about 500 deaths being claimed and about 20 billion uh, pesos in damages. Uh, it was in 2000, still uh, NDCC, NDCC. And then of course, uh, the degradation of the country's marine ecosystem. Uh, there is a shift uh, from subsistence farming uh, in river deltas to cash aquaculture due to saltwater intrusion. Um, and there's also a, a cultural implications in the, the climate change. Um, interestingly, uh, there is a municipality in, in central Philippines, particularly in Cebu, which experience increased rainfall, uh, variability, storm events, and sea level rise in their community for the last 30 years. And unpredictable changes in rainfall events cause serious damages to infrastructure, property, services, livelihoods in, the in that municipality. Um, I think for this reason, uh, uh, the Philippines was invited uh, to be part of this project. This is, uh, next slide please. Oh, can you see? next slide? So the, the project is called Capacity Building in Asia for Resilience Education. This is a three year project funded by, uh, when, when they hear the word cabaret, akala nila nagbibiro kami sa project, but <laughs> it's a serious project, ladies and gentlemen, uh, funded by Erasmus Plus of the European Union, and it was it's, it's being participated by 10 countries, uh, 5 in Asia, 5 in Europe, and about 15 universities. So this is really uh, an engagement of HEIs. That's, that's, that's cabaret, is, I think it's a good venue to uh, engage. Next, please. The very purpose of cabaret is to uh, build the capacity not only at the local level, but globally, regional and, and national based on the post-2015 global uh, agreements. So the emphasis of this project is we should now looking into multi-hazard rather than single hazard. I think in one of the speakers mentioned that si, ano yanta, si, si Congressman Dena, uh, after an earthquake, no? Uh, Ang, ang usually na pwedeng susunod dyan ay tsunami, no? But I don't know kung meron, meron na ba tayong example? Wala tayong experience ng tsunami in the Philippines, no? Tsunami? Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Alright, so 
1976. Okay. Because I was recently attended the the World Bosai Forum in Japan, where you know the Tohoku was uh, affected by by tsunami, and they're now in the rehabilitation phase. No. Uh, the very purpose of this project is to come up with a regional cooperation uh, because they see that hazards are uh, transboundary and of course it's multidisciplinary. Next slide. Likewise, um, uh, the, the project uh, involves multidisciplinary uh, uh, both social sciences, natural sciences. Uh, incidentally, I'm going to share with you as a social scientist, I'm going to share with you the participation of the social science in this multidisciplinary project. So, um, since this, the, the intention of the project is to allow uh, European uh, universities to, to partner with Asian universities for uh, collaboration and, and capacity building. And I think one important aspect is the gap in the last mile early warning system. No? Um, I, when, when the, the first session uh, was, when the presenters during the session was presenting, medyo uh, nagno split ako kasi hindi ko siya masyadong maintindihan. But uh, of course, uh, I was trying my best, I, I think as a social scientist, it's our duty to understand the uh, technology and technicalities. But how much more the people who will be directly affected by, by this? Okay, so the challenge now is, and I think it has been mentioned, the upstream is the warning agency. So many of their <laughs> presentations are very technical, uh, scientific, okay? How are you going to translate that in such a way that people at the downstream or the last mile will be able to understand what does it mean and what are they going to do. I think at the end of the day, that matters most. Basically, this is the aim of the project. So, uh, promote international cooperation, uh, build capacity, and strengthen relations between HEIs. And I would like to uh, highlight that the third, strengthen relations between HEIs and the wider economic and social environment through its focus on coastal communities. So, um, in a sense, it's a platform wherein the universities will have the opportunity to assist uh, specifically uh, coastal communities to become more resilient uh, by helping them in the multi-hazard early warning systems. So, these are the Universities in Asia, so University of Yangon, Mandalay Technology University, University of Manitoba, University of Philadelphia in Sri Lanka, Maldives National University in the Philippines, and the other university, Ateneo. So I would like to acknowledge that La Salle and Ateneo in this project are, are friends. Uh, we are always friends. Uh, of course, this, <laughs> this is a result of our uh, collaboration. So. Uh, because each country was tasked to do uh, an assessment of the uh, status of multi-hazard early warning system. And of course, Indonesia, and you notice that Senator Legarda mentioned about uh, four projects that has been approved for Indonesia because they're very good in multi-hazard early warning system. So Bandung Institute of Technology in particular and Andalas University. Uh, these are social and technology and engineering universities. These are the partners, uh, uh, Region 6, ito yung sa Asia, and then yung uh, mga European universities are the program countries. The, I would like to acknowledge University of Huddersfield in UK, uh, UCLAN also in UK, um, uh, the one in Bul Bulgaria, the one in Malta, and the one in, uh, I, I forgot, Rika is... Uh, uh, somewhere in Europe. <laughs> I forget the, the city. So it, this project draws upon multidisciplinary expertise across program and partner countries. Next slide. So um, as part of the literature review of this project, uh, 
the proponent came up with a uh, review of what transpired in 1980 to 2015, what are the kind of hazards that more or less transpired in all these areas because more or less this, these countries are, are neighboring, no? And what are the, the hazards and uh, more or less how much the amount of damages, okay? Uh, and of course, this justifies how disaster prone these uh, countries are in, in Asia. Next slide, please. The project uh, was implemented through a work package. Uh, if you're familiar with Erasmus+, Plus, they usually do work package. I'm be, I'll be focusing on the WP6, okay, which is, I was, the task, I was tasked to be the, the leader of this partnership with social and economic actors, okay? We, we define social and economic actors as anybody, uh, it could be local government units, it could be NGOs, it could be civil society organizations, in the community which you're going to capacitate. Now, uh, how can this be done? Baka makalimutan ko. One of the main outputs of this World Package 6 is to come up with a secondment plan. No? Secondment is, uh, uh, I think, uh, if you're familiar, a, for example, a university professor will be invited to be the secretary or undersecretary of a certain department. That's secondment. Okay? Uh, in this case, it's a secondment between high HEIs and then going to the community. So the HEIs will be either assigned to an LGU, coastal cities or communities, uh, depending on the requirement of the uh, coastal cities or LGUs. So it's a, it's a work in progress, but more or less, uh, through this project, we were able to come up with the systems on how we're going to go about it. Uh, what are the requirements? What are the, uh, the process? Uh, what, what should be the benefits? And what should be the, and what are the possible problems that may encounter? Next slide, please. Interestingly, the, the framework of the, the project is that it emphasizes on the role of the higher educations, which are education, advocacy, and knowledge development which through uh, the multi-hazard early warning system capacity development, which you see the next uh, second line provided with a lot of possible ways where uh, HEIs can, can, can help. And this will achieve a more, uh, that this will result to identification of capacity needs, uh, what innovations should be introduced. So this is more or less could be concretized through regional cooperation. So for example, we had the opportunity, uh, both Atene University and De La Salle to visit Maldives University to have uh, collaboration with them and regional cooperation to discuss about uh, possible uh, capacity building or research or training program. And of course, the main goal of this is to improve the multi-hazard early warning systems. And these are more or less in compliance with the post-2015 global agreements such as Sendai Framework, uh, Paris Agreement, and the Sustainable Development Goals. Next slide. Um, resulting from this study, uh, we were able to identify what are the capacity gaps uh, that more or less would uh, prevent or would hinder HCIs to engage in uh, secondment no? uh, or providing uh, capacity building to local communities, for example. So, of course, availability funding, uh, etc. Now, part of the project is to look into what are the national initiatives in the country. So, for the Philippines, uh, we, we had the formation of the Climate Change Commission no? in 2009, National Framework Strategy on Climate Change, um, which set the principle for climate action, National Climate Change Action Plan, or NCC CAP, which set targets and priority actions for 2011 until 2028. Uh, well, the, the following slides might be familiar to you. So the, the way uh, the RR councils are, are, in, are formed in the Philippines. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this framework will just tell us that 
we 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 already moved to the direction that we're focusing more on uh, prevention and mitigation rather than uh, uh, response. No, because if we spend more resources for for preparedness, prevention, and mitigation, we'll be spending less money for response. And of course, mainstreaming of the CCA and DRR. I think that's the reason why the name of the academic society should include CCA and DRR. And this is the concrete uh, uh, development from the PD 1566 to RA 101 The The structure has changed tremendously. Next, please. Okay, uh, I think, um, we're, I don't know if we're the last to, to to agree the to to sign the the Paris Agreement, no? Uh, I think this this uh, we we consider this as, as a milestone because we were able to contribute to to this uh, agreement. Next slide. Uh, next slide. So these are the regional uh, um, institutions and initiatives. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, yung mga national uh, initiatives also, which I I'm I'm sure. Many of us are familiar. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, interestingly, I, I think this this uh, development on the Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board in 2014 enabled us to highlight, to include uh, assessing and mapping hazards such as flooding and, and storm surge tsunami, no? e etc. Uh, of course, the executive, these are more or less focused on the coastal communities. Executive Order 533 to streamline efforts to develop countries, coastal and marine environment. We also have a National Integrated Coastal Management Plan 2013-2016. And, um, yeah, Institute, okay. yeah, uh, Institute, Institute of Sustainable Development, okay. Um, some of the observations, aside from the looking into the initiatives, it seems that we have a minimal compliance in terms of the post-2015 global framework, which resulted in poor performance on various development goals and not being aligned with the international framework and guidelines. Likewise, there is a lack of understanding, I think this is a serious concern, there is a lack of understanding by a number of local chief executives on how to localize and contextualize this global framework. I think this is also another avenue where HAIs can be of help. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please. All right. Some of the findings directly related to early warning system. Um, of course, uh, this is uh, this is a cliche that the our government departments are working in silos, and and of course, there's a fragmented institutional arrangements. Uh, uh, I was I was thinking about uh, except maybe for four piece na medyo may collaboration in different agencies. Um, early warning system approach at the national level has been quite technocratic. I, I think uh, uh, sorry for this word, but uh, uh, this has been uh, agreed by by the group. Early warning system is mainly concerned with the availability of technology and how to disseminate warnings. Uh, whether how people respond to warnings has not yet been accounted, more or less. And then, um, uh, I think, I mentioned this already, uh, local and indigenous knowledge, uh, si, si Congressman mentioned na sa kanila, sa Bicol meron, but I am not sure if the scientific community would welcome the uh, considering indigenous knowledge and local knowledge to be part of the they are our uh, scientific community. Okay, some of the um, enablers um, that associated with the multi-hazard early warning system. There are some local chief executives who are instrumental in developing effective early warning systems and DRR plans. Local chief executives were also led in achieving zero casualty during hazards. Uh, and of course, yung Project NOAA. Next. Pagasa was also modernized. Uh, I, I, we heard from the, the deputy speaker that there's a new 
project that, that will uh, continue to modernize Pagasa. Climate change law and DRRM law were accelerated uh, after several typhoons uh, which submerged most of the Metro Manila. Uh, the integration of environmental education in DR in school curriculum at all levels. And of course, the Environmental Awareness Education Act and uh, activities which include student-led hazard mapping and preparedness drill. Based on our findings, what are the roles of the NCIs in, in multi-hazard early warning system? Higher education institutions can play multiple roles such as education and awareness, technical capacity building and implementation of policy and locally relevant research. HEI as centers of innovation can e explore and push for new approaches that can be more effective. Uh, HEIs can provide human resources as uh, resource persons and experts and can help train others or cascade new approaches to lead improving coastal resilience and can continue doing research on hazard and risk assessment but also research of community perceptions to risk communication and management. Okay, so uh, if may I conclude, the Philippines has various initiatives that contribute to multi-hazard early one system and coastal resilience. However, these efforts are not integrated. The Philippines has minimal initiatives in pursuit of post-2015 global framework. National laws are available in the improvement of DRR in general, but not much available in terms of multi-hazard early warning system and coastal resilience. The HEIs play a significant role in, in hazard early warning system and coastal resilience. Recommendations, the different initiatives of the Philippines in improving uh, should be harmonized. The need to maximize the role of HEIs, the, a more sustained effort in pursuit of post-2015 global framework and there's a need for the early warning system to go beyond availability of technology and warning, but need to determine whether concerned community residents understand the message and what to do. Okay. Uh, so the, the project will be completed in January. So our final activity will be held in Bandung and Bali in Indonesia in January 2020. So I look forward that in the future uh, forum, we'll be able to share the, the final output of this project. Thank you very much.